할렐루야. 아멘. Uh, if you remember last month second service I preached about Passover meal and the last supper of Jesus Christ relationship between Passover meal and the last supper of Jesus Christ and we I said and we agree uh, we learned that the Jesus last supper was the Passover meal right was the Passover meal Uh, and the many were explained according to the Jewish culture of eating Passover meal that the last supper Jesus had was the Passover meal, right? We said according to the uh, Jewish culture. So that, that was actually Passover Seder. Passover Seder. Uh, Hebrew, it could be seder, like seder olam, seder. But in English pronunciation, it's a seder, seder. I don't know why, how it became seder. But anyway, in English pronunciation, it's a Passover seder. And Hebrew, perhaps it's a Pascha uh, seder. Anyway, so I said according to this Passover seder, that the The, the, the last supper Jesus took was the Passover meal, we can say. And there was a lamb, and there was un, 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 unleavened bread, and, and, and so on and so. So today, we are going to learn about what is actually the Passover Seder. What is the Passover Seder that Jews uh, keep, right? Jews keep, Jews keep. So uh, let me read the scripture first. The today's uh, main scripture is Luke chapter 22, verse 17 to 20. Luke chapter 22, verse 17 to 20. I will read it for you. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he said, Take this and share it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from, the now, on, on, from now on until the kingdom of God comes. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it. And gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. This is the word of God. Amen. So if you can see from here, as you can see from here, there are actually two cups up here, right? Sequence in Luke chapter 22 verses from 17 to 20 is there is a first cup right cup then bread or you can you may say wine bread and cup of wine again that is the sequence order of the Luke chapter 22 17 to 20 here right and he had taken a cup and given thanks he said take this and share it among yourselves Right? And then verse 19, he had taken some bread and given thanks. He broke it and gave it to, the, give, gave it to them. And ver verse 20 said, in the same way he took the cup after they had eaten. Right? So there comes uh, sequences. And we can see there are at least two cups of wine and bread in between bread. And because of these sequences, we say Jesus was following Jesus was following the Passover Seder. Passover Seder. So let's today learn about this Jewish tradition of Passover Seder. Passover Seder is how to eat Passover meal. How to eat Passover meal. So first, time of Passover Seder. Time of Passover Seder. When to eat. When to eat. Normally, Passover Seder is to be held, is to be eaten, right? On the night of the 15th of Nisan. 15th day of Nisan. Night of 15th day of Nisan. Nisan. Is it one S, two S? 
One is? Okay, thank you. Nissan. As you know, Jewish day system starts with evening, start with night, and morning followed by, right? Followed by morning. So, night of the 15th of Nisan is when? Is the night between 14 and 15, right? So if timeline goes like this, it's the night between 14 and 15. That is the night of the 15th day of Nisan, right? Am I correct? So it can be said, this can be said, it's the ni late night of the 14th. 14th of the first month, 14th of Nisan is what feast? 14th of Nisan is... Passover, right? Passover. So they just had to kill, right? They just had to, they just had to kill a uh, lamb, right? They just had a Passover feast. And then following night, as I said, it, it may be because they have to kill the lamb in between, what, two evenings, right? Three, two, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So whatever they are eating must be after 6 p.m., right? I, I said it a month ago, right? So, uh, according to Passover Seder, they specify, they specifically uh, describe that the Passover Seder, which is a Passover meal, should be eaten on the night of the 15th of Nisan. 15th of Nisan. So, which means after 6 p.m. on, after 6 p.m. onward, right? After 6 p.m. onward, the uh, meal should be eaten. You understand? So this is just uh, what I said last month, but it is confirmed by the Passover Seder. Passover Seder specifically said, meal should be eaten on the nine, night of the 15th of the Nisan. 19, night of the 15th of Nisan. Yeah, 15th of Nisan. According to Jew as I said, according to Jewish day system, night of the 15th means night between 14 and 15, not, not night after. Yeah, yeah, this, this is the night of the 15th of Nisan. Yes. <laughs> so, so we all agree on that, right? We all know, understood about this. Okay, so I was glad to see, actually, to find this information from Passover Seder that it is clearly stated that uh, the meal should be eaten on the nine, night of the 15th of Nisan. Okay, now let's go into order of the Passover Seder. Order. Order of the Passover Seder. Well, actually, you know, Holy Communion, the way to conduct Holy Communion are various, I mean, it varies uh, according to denomination, according to church, according to country. If you go to Anglican, they call it Eucharistic, right? And they do it different way. If you go to Catholic Church, they do it different way. If you go Methodist, they do it different way. If you go to Korean Presbyterian, they do it different way, right? Likewise, even though the Passover Seder is the ceremony to Jewish culture and Jewish ceremony to eat the Passover meal, but according to reason, according to, according to the region, and according to the groups of people, the way are varies. The, the, the ways, way, way varies. The, there are uh, slightly different ways of uh, conducting things. So this is not the only way. This is one of the way. So... Uh, uh, the first start with a candle lighting. Candle lighting. The first candle lighting. Uh, it begins with a female lighting the candle and say the blessing. I mean, 
there, there are many times the bless, blessing is announced and blessing is proclaimed. I will not cover all of them because there are so many. Before they eat drink, um, before they eat bread, before they drink a cup of wine, they there are things to say according to their culture. So I will not cover all of them. But uh, here, the female came out and and light the kindle the light the candle and they say the blessing. That is the blessed are thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has set us apart by your commandments and commanded us concerning the kindle, uh, kindling of the Pascha, Pascha lights, which is Passover lights. Amen. That's according to their uh, tradition, okay? That's not in the Bible. That's according to their tradition. So it shows that they believe light will come through the hand of woman. Can you recall any scripture about light or the hope comes through woman? Uh, yeah, also Genesis chapter 3, 15. Thank you. Yes, yes. I, I, I believe both right. And it says, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed, he shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. So the, the son of man, right? The Messiah will come as the seed of the woman, right? Seed of the woman. So also the Jew, of course, Messiah for us is Jesus Christ, but for them is a Messiah, right? Jews believe the Messiah will come as the, or through the hand of, hand of the woman. So female, specifically on this woman, go and kindle the light. So light comes through hand of the woman. It symbolizes light comes through the hand of the woman. But some reasons don't have this part. This is, this, is, this is the part have a variation here. And the second order is the first cup. First cup. First cup of wine. First cup of wine. Okay, how many cups of wine? How many cups of wine do they drink during the Passover Seder? How many? You got number one, number two, number three, number four. <laughs> two. Okay. Bit short. <laughs> they, drunk, they drink four cups in together. All together they drink four cups. Now, the first step is to uh, drink the first cup. What does it mean, each cup? First cup, first, I mean, each cup represents the promises of God, the, God, the promises that God made during the Exodus. Each cup represents each promise God made during the Exodus. First one is, I will bring out. I will bring out. Second one is, I will deliver. Third is, I will redeem. I will redeem. Fourth one is, I will take. Let's look at uh, Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. Exodus chapter 6, verse 6 to 7. Amen. Thank you. So you, you can see that first promise is I will bring you out from the under the burdens of the uh, Egyptian, right? So I will bring out. That's the first uh, cup uh, being represented. And the second is I will deliver you from their bondage, right? The third, I will also redeem you. That's the third promise. And fourth is then I will take you for my people. So this, these are the four promises. And these four promises are represented by each cup 
the four cups they are drinking. So the father of a house, used, normally the Passover Seder, Passover meal, was conducted by a family size. Of course, there is a communal size and there is a uh, country size as well. But normally, it's a family size, right? So father of the house or the head of the house recite the blessing and pour wine into the cups and they drink the first cup. They drink the first cup. And here we have to remember this Passover Seder, although it's a ritual, it's a ceremony, it is not only allowed to male adults, but female and children and also foreigners. During the Passover meal, they should invite any foreigner right, around them, also female and children. As you can see, female uh, kindle the candle, right? In the beginning, so females are inclusive, in, 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 are there already in the in the table in the room. And the third, after first cup, is a washing hands. Washing hands, washing hands. This also varies. Depends. I mean, it, it depends. It dif it's, it varies. Depends on the 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 group of people and the uh, reason, reasons as well. Uh, normally, what happens is uh, if when uh, the Jews eat any vegetable that is soaked or wet, they are to wash hands. They are to wash hands before they eat any vegetable that is soaked or wet. But next, uh, the fourth uh, order, fourth sequence is to eat vegetable uh, deep in, in deep into the salt water. Salt water. So. Uh, some culture, some people, uh, they wash hands before they touch this wet vegetable. So the third is the washing hands. And the, as I said, fourth is the vegetable in salt water. Salt water. Vegetables in salt water. Now they dip vegetables into either salt water or vinegar or bitter sauce. There is a Hebrew names for it, but you know, just I think take it easy in English. Either salt water, vinegar, or bitter sauce. Uh, when you Begin when you begin this Passover Seder, as a table of a conductor, there are uh, there are plate and there are six items on the plate, and one of them is vegetable, and one of them is bitter herb. Uh, there are there are they are a little bit different. They are still uh, both vegetables, but one is actually uh, is a bitter herb. It's like a root thing. So when you eat it, you will immediately feel the bitterness. And another one is a just normal vegetable, but this normal vegetable you have to dip into deep uh, bitter sauce. So this time you are eating vegetables in a bitter sauce. Why? The bitterness symbolizes and represents the suffering and the oppression they had under the Egypt, right? So why the in the beginning they first they drink the first cup which is our bring out, and they uh, dip this vegetable into a bitter sauce, and when they take it, it should make you cry. <laughs> Understand? The reason why they are taking in bitter sauce is make you cry, make your tears drop. Because the ancestor of Israelites they cried a lot, right? They suffered a lot during the wilderness time during, under the Egyptian, uh, uh, under the hand of Egyptian. So it literally made you cry, like you are eating a lot of uh, chili bali together with your rice to make you cry. That's the that's the purpose of the bitter sauce here, to make you cry, physically. So we can remember about, we can commemorate about time. Uh, under the oppression of Egypt. Bitter, yeah. 
Yeah, sauce, like uh, the toma tomato sauce. sauce. <laughs> you may say it's a horseradish, because nowadays they are using horseradish. So this bitter sauce can be understood as a horseradish, but it also depends on the uh, locations and the, and the group of people. Exodus chapter 12, verse 8. Exodus chapter 12, verse 8. Can anyone read? Thank you, Amen. Okay, so uh, because God said they should eat with the bitter herbs, so they are eating vegetable in the bitter sauce. And the uh, fifth sequence is breaking of the middle bread. Breaking of the middle bread. As I said, in the table of a conductor of this Passover Seder, uh, there are two things. One is a plate with the six items. They are sauce or they are vegetables and, and things like that. So there are six items here. And another part is there are uh, unleavened bread, three pieces of unleavened bread. Three pieces of unleavened bread. It's piled up. So it's a one, but it's a three, right? So there are three pieces of uh, unleavened bread. It piles up. But somehow, uh, they don't use all of them. They only took the middle part, middle piece, and break it. Uh, they took middle piece, middle piece of the, of the unleavened bread, and they break in half. And when you break it, one's supposed to be bigger, right? And one's supposed to be smaller, right? So the bigger part, they wrapped it wrapped in a, in a white cloth, and they hide. And they only conduct the ceremony with a small part, smaller part of the, uh, uh, this bread. There are three pieces, right? They don't touch the first one and the that last one. They don't touch. But they cut it half, bigger piece they hide, and the smaller piece they use to do the ceremony. You can, you can understand, right? There are three pieces, and this is how they do. So they break it and they hide here the, uh, the bigger part, the, the larger, larger part. The sixth is before eating, this is the breaking, right? Yeah, breaking the, breaking the bread. And before they taking the bread, now the main part. Retelling the story of Exodus. I think, I believe, when I, when I uh, study about this Passover Seder, this is the main. Eating is not the main. Lamb is not the main cause. Retelling the story of, uh, of Exodus to the children, that's the main. And that, that takes longer time, longest time within these ceremonies. So after breaking it, now is a retelling the time of retelling the story of e Exodus. Huge importance of Passover Seder lies on transmitting the faith of parents to their children. Uh, transmitting the faith of parents to their children. Are we not familiar with this? <laughs> this is what we've been talking about, isn't it? Transmitting our faith to our children, right? That was there even from Jewish culture. The Jews really wanted to transmit their faith, the faith of the parents to their children. So they made this session, and how? A children, a child, if there are many children, the children, and if there are only one child, then a child, ask series of questions. And if there is only uh, one father, then the father should be 
uh, should answer all the questions, or if there are many elders, many uh, grown up, then the, each grown up should answer each. So there, there are about four to five questions set by the uh, Jewish tradition. Simply, the question is like this. Why is this night different from all other nights? That's kind of basic question. Why is this night different from all other nights? That's the basic question. And uh, um, uh, from them, there are about four to five specific questions. I'll, I'll read it now. The first is, why is that on all other nights during the year, we eat either leavened bread or unleavened bread, right? Depends on. But on this night, we eat only unleavened bread. Why we eat only unleavened bread tonight? That is the first question that children should ask according to their culture. And then the, uh, the father, head of the house, should answer them by the telling, the retelling the uh, story of Exodus. How it happened, why it happened, and things like that. So this is a kind of a home Bible study time. The father ought to teach their children about Exodus, and about the promises of God. The second question, why is it that on all other nights we eat all kinds of vegetable, but on this night we eat bitter herbs? Why we eat bitter herbs tonight? So the father should be able to answer that question. And third, why is it that on all other nights we do not dip our food even once, but on this night we dip them twice? As you saw, we just dip vegetable in salt water, right? In horseradish, in bitter sauce. So that is not normal for uh, Jewish people. So they, the children ask why uh, we uh, dip them twice on, on tonight. And the fourth question is why is that on all other nights we dine either sitting upright or reclining? So wh whether sitting upright or reclining, it depends on the situation or the uh, condition. But on this night we all recline. That is uh, perhaps the uh, culture and the uh, area we never talked about, right? The, the Passover meal should eat should be eaten reclining left side. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, bit like, like a leaning on, onto the, onto the uh, floor or the chair, and you should recline and eat it. And it, it, may, it has a significance, but we never talked about it, right? So that is also the question that uh, children brought on that night, and the father should be able to answer the question. And the fifth is, why is it on all other nights we eat meat either roasted, marinated, or cooked, but on this night it is entirely roasted? Why do we eat lamb roasted, right? That's the fifth question. We all remember Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 32, verse 7, right? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Wait one. <laughs> I'm sure you, 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 can, you can recite, right? Remember the days of old. Consider the years of old generations. Ask to who? Your father. And he will inform you. Your elders, they will tell you, right? So according to this, when children ask, father are old to answer them without looking at any Bible, right? Without looking at any... Uh, hint or the uh, summary, right? The father should be able to teach them the story of the Bible uh, immediately. So that is the moment of uh, uh, the retelling the story of Exodus and the uh, reconfirming, reaffirming the promises of God that God gave through. I will bring out, I will deliver, I will redeem, and I will take. Sometimes children are so excited about getting to getting know about this, you know, information. They sometimes discuss long, right? And they sometimes take longer time to explain this. And uh, they rather uh, shorten the rest of the uh, ceremony than give uh, enough time into this section, retelling the story of uh, 
Exodus. This is the most important part, actually. As I said, it's not about eating the lamb. It's not about eating the unleavened bread. It's about the transmitting the uh, faith to their children. So I hope that everyone, every parent in this room, in this sanctuary, uh, by God's grace, by the grace of God, may be able to right, teach your children and transmit faith to your children so that they may grow up as the children of God and they may really serve God well and work for God well. Amen? Amen. So, at the end of the Exodus, how the story ends? How the story ends? Exodus ends with ten plagues, right, isn't it? Ten plagues. So after the children ask this question, they now recite the ten plagues, names of ten plagues. The, all of them recite, or the head of the house, they recite the names of ten plagues. And drink the second cup, drink the second cup. So after retelling, uh, name the, recite the ten, names of ten plagues and drink the second cup. Why the drink the second cup is related to ten plagues? Second cup signifies what? Which, which promise of God? I will? I will? Deliver. From where? From the plagues, right? I will deliver from the plague. So the second cup is related to ten plagues. That's why and at the end of the questionnaire, the head of the house recite the names of ten plagues and they drink the second cup. Because it's the promise of God, I will deliver you from these plagues that you just mentioned. Seventh order is the washing hands again. Washing hands. Washing hands. Here, the, this washing hands is not uh, official, it's not uh, uh, com compulsory. It's, it's only those who are touching the wet vegetables, right? But this washing hand is a ritual. This washing hand is for everyone. It doesn't matter what, uh, you know, what, touch, uh, what, what they touch later. It's, it's the ritual. They have to. They have to wash their hands at this moment. This is for everyone. Washing hands. And the eighth, now it comes to bitter herb. Bitter herb. Bitter herbs. Uh, they also uh, dip these bitter herbs into horseradish or to make it uh, even more bitter, right? Even, even bit more bitter. So, uh, it's again to commemorate of the bitterness of the uh, life in w wilderness or in, in, in the, under the... Uh, actually, yes. Yeah, anyway, the bitterness uh, represents the suffering and the, and the bitterness of, of their life. And it, will, it, will, it is to bring their tears out, right? It is to bring their tears out. After eating the bit, uh, bitter herbs, they eat uh, sandwiches. Sandwiches. Now, only, only bread they have is unleavened bread, right? Unleavened bread. As I said, this is the only part. The, you know, this part. And they uh, cut it as an olive-sized portion. Olive-sized. It's not big. Just about Probably it's the same about same as about our communion bread, isn't it? Wafer, about olive size uh, bread and give it two pieces each this time. So in between these two unleavened bread pieces of unleavened bread, they put bitter herbs inside, or they put the bitter sauce inside, bitter herb inside. So they made a sandwich and ate it. So unleavened bread sandwiches with the bitter herbs. They eat bitter herb first, and then they make a sandwich with the unleavened bread and bitter herb, 
and eat it together. That's the ninth uh, order. And the tenth is the meal. The meal is what? Lamb. Right? Roasted lamb. So now, after they have eaten all this, they are eating the meal. We said last month that there is no specific mention, there is no specific uh, recording or description that Jesus ate the lamb during the Last Supper. But there are hints that we can understand that Jesus had suffer or meal or the lamb, right? Shall we look at Luke chapter 22, verse 20? Luke chapter 22, verse 20. Amen. He took the cup. This is the cup after they had eaten, right? They had eaten. And this is also uh, confirmed by Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 25. I'll read it for you. For I received from the law that I that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So you can see that uh, this is the clue that we said the Jesus followed the Passover Seder. They, Jesus took the bread first, right? Took the bread first. Bread is eaten where? Here. Isn't it? This is only the breaking the bread, and eating the bread is here, sandwiches. Right? So after the eating the bread, the, the, if they... The Bible says the next, what, what next comes is the meal, is the lamb. And it says, after they had eaten, right? After they had eaten, uh, he took the cup again. After they had eaten. That's the Luke chapter 22, right? And 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says, after supper, this cup is new covenant, right? After supper. So, sequence is bread and the supper and the cup again. Bread, supper, and the cup again. Eleventh is the another cup, third cup, right? That's why we can say this supper signifies the lamb. Supper signifies the meal. This is the main meal of that day. Rest of them is all kind of appetizer or the, the pre-food, uh, right? When, when, when they the lamb is the main meal of that day. So when the Bible says they had eaten or after supper, it means Jesus already finished the meal. Jesus took the meal, which is the lamb. That's why we can say, although there is no word lamb appeared during the Last Supper, right? Jesus actually had lamb. It had eaten lamb there. Because the, the, the Passover Seder, according to Passover Seder, orders of pa Passover Seder, after the bread, it must be the time of eating the lamb. And then third cup of wine should come. So uh, the meal is finished. And the, after meal finished, what comes next? Not the third cup immediately, but... Uh, next is finding the hidden piece. Hidden bread. Right, where is it? Here, breaking the bread, right? In the fifth sequence, the conductor broke the bread. And as I said, larger part, bigger part, 
he hid, right? He hide somewhere. And now he is asking children to look for it and to find it. Uh, of course, uh, the, the, Jewish, the, 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 the professors in Jewish culture, they say the reason why uh, the, 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 the Jewish culture look ask children to look for this is because it's quite late night already. They started from 6 p.m. And by the, after the teaching, after the meal, it would be about already 10 p.m., 11 p.m., right? And the children are ought to fall asleep. So in order, or in, in order to help them not to fall, in, fall, fall asleep, they give a task to a children. Hey, there is a hidden piece of bread. Will you find it? And if you find it, there will be a, there will be a reward of chocolate or sweet or whatever later on. So uh, the, it, is all, it is to uh, uh, the make children awake until the finish of the ceremony. They say, but here we have to, I mean, there are things that we can, we can think of. And we, when we look at this hidden bread, in a Christian view, in a Christian perspective, the Greek word for this hidden uh, unleavened bread is afi komen, afi komen, afi komen. Afi komen means which comes later, which comes later. So in English translation, it, it was translated as a Dessert. Why? Because dessert comes later than the main meal, right? So uh, that's right. But in Christian view, the one who comes later, the one who was broken, the one who was wrapped in white cloth, and the one who comes later signifies who? The second coming Jesus Christ, isn't it? The resurrected Jesus Christ. Of course, this is a Jewish culture. There is no way that they uh, include the meaning of Jesus Christ into their culture, right? Yet, somehow, when we look at it with a Christian view, Christian perspective, somehow this middle piece, the larger piece that is hidden and wrapped in white cloth, which, which he, uh, the, 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 the language, is, the word signifies the, the one who comes later, the one comes later. It symbolizes, it, it tells us, it somehow links, right? Give us an idea that it perhaps is talking about or symbolizing about Jesus Christ who's coming again. Jesus Christ who's coming again. So as they need to find this hidden piece of the bread in order to continue their uh, ceremony and in order to finish their journey, we also have to find the Jesus Christ who's coming again in order to finish our journey of faith, in order to finish our ceremony. Isn't it? So we need to receive resurrected Jesus and we need to receive the second coming Lord. So that is the finding the hidden bread and the next is third wine cup, third cup of wine, third cup of wine. Now here, third cup of wine uh, represents what? I will redeem, right? I will redeem, I will redeem. Now, let me ask you, before Messiah comes, who should come first, according to Jewish culture? Elijah, right, Elijah. So this time, during the third call, what they do is, they ask a young, they open the front door, they open the main door. Why? They believe that Elijah would come on the Passover meal, that Elijah uh, would visit every house during the Passover time, right? So they open it, open the door for Elijah to come. And a young child, young child, a young lad, go out and yell, Eliyahu, 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 Eliyahu. 
So every young child go out to the, uh, the street I mean, or the, close to the door and, and yell, cry out, Eliyahu, Eliyahu. That, sim that represents that they are waiting and looking for Eliza, who supposed to come or who they believe supposed to come on the Passover night and visit all of them before a Messiah comes. And uh, they prepare another cup for Eliza <laughs> at the end of the table. <laughs> it's a bit of a, uh, yeah. I think it's not the right faith, but anyway, they prepare a cup of wine uh, for the Eliza to uh, come and drink. And uh, that's their culture to yell Eliyahu uh, on the Passover night. When we look at Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, can anyone read it for us? Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. Amen. Jesus cried, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, right? And the people say what? Oh, he is calling out Eliza. Let's see whether Eliza is coming and save him, right? Why? Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, and, and people thought he is calling out Eliza. Why? Because it was the season of Passover, right? Jesus was crucified on the Passover season, during the Passover season, and that was the time Culturally, they yell out, Eliyahu, Eliyahu, looking for Eliyah. So that's why when Jesus cried out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, they thought, oh, maybe he is calling out Eliyahu now. Eliyahu, Eliyahu. He is, he is calling out Eliza now. That's why people say, let's see whether Eliza come and, 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 and save him. He is calling out Eliza. That's why. Okay, after that, they poured out a third cup and drink the third cup of wine. Now, uh, 13 is the song of praise, song of Hallel or song of praise. Song of praise. Huh? I think I skipped one. Here, sorry, before the third cup of wine, right? Finding the hidden bread, I didn't say that they are eating the, this uh, broken bread, right? Uh, after they finding the hidden, hidden uh, broken bread, they are eat. They are to eat this bread as well. They are to eat this bread. So this is the, as, as, as I said, as, we, as English says, is the dessert. This is a meal, uh, this is a food after the main meal. They eat the lamb and they eat everything here, but at the end of it, they again eat this bitter unleavened bread. Why? So that until next morning, or actually the, 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 this kind of meal starts from this day and lasts for seven days, right? Because the feast of unleavened bread follows by and it lasts for the seven, seven days. So this is the first day of eating this unleavened bread food, and they will keep eating the same food over and over again. And the reason why they are eating unleavened bread at the end of the uh, meal is to uh, refresh their mouth, refresh their taste with bitterness once again. So they will not remember about lamb, they will not remember about any other thing, but they will only remember about this bitter unleavened bread. So yeah, so the the hidden manna, oh, sorry, hidden bread should be eaten during the eleventh sequence, and the twelfth was what, third cup of wine, and now uh, El El Eli Eliyahu was called, and the thirteen is a song of praise, song of praise, 
And the fourth cup of wine shall be drunk. drunk. Fourth cup of wine here. Fourth cup of wine. Fourth cup of wine represents what? It represents the promise of God, I will take. Right? I will take. I will take. Shall we look at Exodus chapter 6 verse 7? Exodus chapter 6 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Amen. I will take you for my people. The Hebrew word for take is lakats. 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 Take is lakats. And it is normally used in the expression of marriage. Marriage. I will take you as my husband, right? I will take you as my wife, right? That take is the same take that is used in here as well. So when God said, I will take you for my people, it means it, it uh, naturally for the Jew, Jew, Jewish people, it brings the idea of marriage there. God will take us as his wife. But that is not against the New Testament uh, 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 understanding as well, right? At the end, in Revelation, what will happen? We will become bride and the lamb will become groom isn't it jesus will become groom and we will be the bride revelation chapter 21 verse 9 to 10 revelation chapter 21 verse 9 to 10 So in the last day, there will be a wedding feast between the lamb and his people, right? The bride and groom. Of course, the Passover meal, Passover say they cannot, uh, they, the Jew, Jew, Jews cannot uh, include this the New Testament theory into their uh, Passover seda. But somehow, when we look at when we look at it with a Christian view, Christian perspective, we can actually link that to the wedding feast that will happen in heaven. I will take, means I, I will take as my wife. And, and, and God will take us as his wife, as his bride. Right? And the last, final stage is a song of Passover. Song of Passover. Song of Passover. Now they finish with a, uh, this. There is a, if you look at this uh, uh, orders, of Passover Seder, there are uh, uh, songs that is written as a songs of Passover, songs of praise, and things like that. And you have to just recite what is written there. So the song of praise, the song of uh, Passover, is the last thing that they should sing and re uh, re recall about the, uh, the, the Exodus and the, about the God's promise. And it means next year in Jerusalem, next year in Jerusalem. So it's finished now. All the ceremony is finished. Let's see. Let's meet again next year in Jerusalem uh, for another Passover. And that is, that is similarly done in Jesus' Last Supper, right? Matthew chapter 26, verse 30. Matthew chapter 26, verse 30. Mm. Matthew chapter 26 verse 30 says after singing a hymn they went out to the Mount of Olives they, when, they, when they finished the Last Supper this was the last act last deed right after singing a hymn they went out to Mount of Olives that is why our Holy Communion always finished with this scripture after singing a hymn they went out to Mount of Olives if you remember if you 
uh, remember how we finish the Holy Communion, you may wonder why we always finish with this verse. It's because this is the last uh, thing on the Passover Seder here. This is a song of Passover, and for us is the singing a hymn, and we finish the ceremony of Passover, I mean the Holy Communion. And that's why we are following this uh, tradition, and we read Matthew chapter 26, verse 30, as the uh, final action, final deed of our Holy Communion. Okay, so this is it. This is the end of the Passover Seder. And uh, as this is not the Bible, this is a Jewish tradition, right? So not everything is perfect, not everything is right, of course. Not, not everything is biblical. But there are a few things, some things that we can learn from it. And we can link together with the Jesus Last Supper, why he had to do it. And when he did it, what did he mean to what what did he mean to yeah what he meant to do it right what did he mean with it so uh, you can write it down and you can perhaps re read it home and and you can refer it when you uh, study one more time about Passover meal later so that's that's it today but remember the importance the most important part of this Passover Seder is about transmitting faith to your children. Uh, transmitting faith to your children. I think we should have our own Passover Seder, some sort of, in our house as well, to transmit your faith to your, pa uh, your children as well. Uh, to not neglect transmitting your faith to your children. So I...